Hi, I'm Abby Christensen. I'm a local artist and an art handler in Phoenix. Today we're going to be making some face masks. It's easy enough to do if you've got a sewing machine. We can talk through some steps to do it if you don't have a sewing machine as well. All right. So. To start with, um, you're going to need a pattern. I made my own pattern. I looked at some uh, tutorials online that helped me figure out the shape. I ended up with a shape like this. For each mask, you're going to need two of these. You're going to need an outer fabric and you're going to need an inner fabric. Um, we can talk about what those are. For my outer fabric, I'm using bandanas just because I think it looks cool and if we have to stay safe, we might as well look cool too. So you want to have your fabric folded in half. So you've got two layers here. Um, so I've got my two layers. I'll put it on my cutting mat and then I'll pin my pattern right onto it. Once you've got it pinned, um, I'm using a rotary cutter, but you can also use scissors and just cut right around the edges of your pattern. And so you'll cut two pieces that are the same shape. got them cut you can take your pins out and you've got two pieces that are face to face the same shape of your outside fabric you can set those aside and then take your inside fabric this is the sleeve of a long sleeve shirt that I don't wear anymore I like to use something soft like a t-shirt for the inside fabric because it's gonna be against your face and it feels a lot more comfortable and you'll do the exact same thing since it's a sleeve I have two layers and I'll just put my pattern on it pin it and cut it out again If you don't have a rotary cutter, you can just use regular sewing scissors. So you'd pin it and then you'd just cut right around the edge of your paper pattern just the same. So then you can take the pattern off, set that aside and you'll be done with that. And you've got two pieces of your lining and two pieces of your outer. So then once you've got those set, my next step is that I like to sew them together. So you've got your two pieces and you can keep them just how they were when you cut them. And you'll start by sewing right along this line right here. You're gonna sew about an eighth to a quarter inch inside, um, just leaving a little bit of a seam allowance. Um, you don't have to back stitch or anything because you're gonna sew over the edge of that and it'll be captured with, within the mask. So you'll do that with your lining and then with your exterior fabric. If you're using a pattern that has like a really bright pattern on it, then you wanna make sure that the bright sides of your fabric are facing each other. So you'll see the back of your fabric when you're sewing. That way when you open it up, you have got the bright pattern on the outside. So faces together, I'll do the exact same thing that I did with my lining fabric. All right, so I'll set those aside. Um, and next, it's time to think about um, options to use for straps. There's a lot of different things you can use. I've been making my own straps, and so I'll start with fabric. This is actually just a cotton sheet that I bought. Um, I cut a one inch strip. Um, I've then gone and ironed them in half. So when they're ironed in half, um, it's just a half inch folded in half strip, which I'll then take into my sewing machine. This is a little bit finicky, but I'll take it and fold my edges in like a, like a double fold bias tape so that it's all folded in and the entire thing is captured. And then just run it along through my sewing machine. And it's a little bit of a process, but there are a lot faster options that you can do as well. So rather than having to stitch the whole length of this, um, what you can do is you can actually buy pre-folded bias tape that's folded the exact same way as the one that I'm making. It's just a little bit wider than what I'm using, but it works the same. So it's folded to the inside and it's already ironed and all you have to do is sew that. You can also use elastic or shoelaces or any sort of thin webbing or ribbon. It all works the same as long as you can tie it, it works. So I already have some that's ready here. And you want four pieces if you're gonna do ties and you want them to probably be about 14 inches long just to make sure that you've got enough room to tie it comfortably without having to kind of struggle with it. This is where things start to feel a little bit counterintuitive because you're putting the pieces together and since we're working on something that's gonna be curved on our face, it has some weird, some weird curves to it. So now that I've got these stitched together, I'm just gonna cut off my extra thread and just trim it a little bit close to the seam. 
so that there's just a little bit less extra inside when I sew them together. Um, I actually made one that is hand stitched. It's not entirely finished, so I could show you. But you follow the same steps, and I used a contrasting thread so you can see it a little bit better. You stitch right around, and it's the same thing. Um, you wanna make sure your stitches are small because that's what holds it tight, but I just used a regular needle and thread. I, I use more pins than I do with my sewing machine. I left those in to show that just because when you're handling it a lot, it has more tendency to move. So now I'll start with my outer fabric and just open it up. Um, you don't have to have it totally open. You're gonna have a little fold there and that's okay. This is when we're placing our um, straps and the placement is pretty important. So um, this is gonna be the top of the mask that goes right here. So you want your strap to attach um, on this top edge, probably about a quarter inch in from the edge, maybe just a little bit further. And then your second one is going to attach just on the bottom of this edge. So the angles are important because that helps one strap go underneath your ear and one go up over your ear without just crunching it. Um, so getting the placement like that is really helpful. The easiest way that I've found to do it is to actually open up my lining fabric before I even mess with the straps and get it placed right on top of here. This is the part that feels like maybe you're doing something wrong, but that means that you've got it lined up correctly. <laughs> When you pick it up, you'll have a weird little blob underneath and a weird little blob up top. So you want your curves to be facing outward on both of those. Um, you'll get your edge lined up. And then once I've got that aligned, I like to just kind of fold that back so it stays in place, especially since I'm using a t-shirt material, it kind of almost sticks to the other fabric. Put my strap on there, fold it back, pick them up all together, and use a pin, pin that in place. And then I'll do the same for the bottom. So the strap goes in between the two layers. Right, and then I'll do the same on the other side. So just make sure it's still lined up straight. Since we do have that curve to fight with in the middle, it just shifts a little bit. Once you've got it um, like this, I've got all my pins in there. I like to put the t-shirt side up just because it's easier for me. I feel like um, it has a little more tendency to, to stretch. So if you are using a sewing machine, I like to have more control by having that as my top layer. So I put my pins through that. But once you've got it like this, just pop that outside fabric right in there. And you can see it's kind of starting to take the shape of a mask. Now I'll add a couple more pins just to hold it in place for when I'm actually sewing. And then down here, since you've got all these straps just dangling out, um, I like to put them all on one side. So I'll kind of squish them over and then align half of the bottom of the mask. We're gonna leave a little space open at the bottom because that's what we're gonna use to turn it right side out because right now the whole thing is inside out. So when I'm sewing, I'm not gonna worry about any of this section between my fingers here. I'll start here, I'll work all the way around this side and back, but I'll just leave a little gap where those straps are poking out. And when you're sewing with this, again, you can do just about a quarter inch seam allowance. I like to just kind of line it up with the edge of my presser foot. I also backstitch a little bit on this just because it helps when you're turning it inside out. When you get to the corner, if you're using the machine, make sure your needle is in the fabric. Lift your presser foot and just turn the fabric. That'll keep it from sliding or getting a funny curve, um, and it helps you start with a straight stitch on your next, next round. So now that I've got it stitched, I'm gonna remove all my pins. And I've got these little bits just sticking out, and so I'll just trim those off because we don't need extra stuff inside of our masks. But now we've got this little hole right here in the bottom that we left open, and we're gonna use that to turn our mask right side out. You can use the straps to help pull it a little bit too. You wanna take a second to just make sure it's fully turned around. So we've got it all, all there, and it's starting to look like a real mask. So now, 
with this hole, the way that we close it up is that you just kind of have to fold it in a little bit so it matches, um, matches the seams that we did before. I'm gonna use a pin. Just pin that right there. And then I like to start sewing there so it'll close that gap first. And what I'm gonna do is, even though it looks finished, I'm gonna stitch just right around the edges and that'll help hold it a little flatter and give it some extra stability. It'll hold your straps in place a little better um, and it'll close up that gap. When you're stitching around at this part, it's important to just take your time. If you're more comfortable pinning it in place, feel free to do that. Um, I like to just kind of align it as I go. If you go too fast, sometimes it'll slide around. So just take your time. When you get back to where you started, you wanna just go a little bit, um, maybe a half inch or an inch over what you already started to stitch and that'll help kind of lock it in place and finish that seam. And your mask is pretty much done. So the last thing that I'm gonna do since I made my straps is that there's just raw cut fabric here at the end um, and I am just gonna stitch that and seam that up. So what I'll do is just take my straps and put them there and I'm just gonna stitch back and forth right over the edge a few times um, just to keep it from, keep the fabric from, from coming apart. And I just take scissors and cut them right apart. And that way your fabric won't unravel ends of your straps and you're all set and you've got your mask. Thanks, I hope that helps you make a mask at home. You can use whatever fabric you want. Um, if we have to wear these, we might as well feel good about what we're wearing, so stay safe out there.